Hey, what's up everybody? This is Polio Jr. Uh, and in today's video, uh, I'm just going to be going over a few uh, different options that are available to everybody as far as uh, passive income goes. Basically, um, investing your money and just letting it accrue interest, essentially. And then maybe some more, um, you know, there's going to be low risk or virtually no risk uh, investments uh, than going into, um, you know, not high risk, but a little bit more risk. <laughs> so uh, this is, before I start, because um, I'm just, once I start, I'm going right into exactly what I'm talking about, and I'm going to try not to deter away from exactly what I'm uh, talking about. Uh, but before I start, this is something more for, is more geared or more oriented to anybody that has um, that has at least a couple hundred dollars um, that they can invest every other week um, or every month. So so at least investing every, a couple hundred dollars every other week or once a month, something like that. Like just putting it even just putting it into your calendar and having a reminder saying, hey, put X amount into this, X amount into this, and X amount into this or just X amount into one thing. And my recommendation is to set, um, you know, have a budget, but have at least like this clear line where you want your your main checking account to be. So where all your bills are being withdrawn from and so forth, have, have a minimum balance that you want to have that always be at. Even if it's just $500, um, $1,000, and you just want to let it, you just want to at least have it there for when you do have bills and so forth. <clears throat> but that being said, um, let's go into some options here. Now, the first one we're looking at that's on the screen um, is a bank called Barclays Bank. Uh, they are, I think they were, I think originally they were created and based in Great Britain. And I, you can, have, they're obviously, um, they do have a lot of like brick and mortar banks over there, but you can sign up for an online uh, savings account in the United States and other places in the world where they have a APY on their regular savings account they have a 1.85 uh, APY which is absolutely unheard of for any regular savings account where you can freely move your money back and forth from your checking account without uh, accruing any fees and so forth it's not it's really really cool so there's, and it says right here, there's no minimum deposit and there's no maximum monthly uh, deposit. Uh, there's no, you, you won't get penalized for anything. <clears throat> and worse comes to worst. I like the savings account because this is like when you absolutely do not know what to do with any extra money that you have. If you really, you, you don't feel comfortable investing into anything else, at least put it into a savings account that has a high APY. Um, or better yet, uh, a CD account. So, and their CD accounts are absolutely through the roof, uh, offering 3% of whatever you have invested. Um, so if you are not as financially disciplined, then a CD account would be better. Um, an IRA would even be better. But if you can get a rate like 3%, at least, um, because if you pull out money out of, uh, out of a CD account or like an IRA account, uh, you are going to be penalized. So, but so these are nice uh, three-year, four-year, five-year uh, CD accounts that offer really, really high interest rates or you know high APY rates. So definitely check out uh, Barclays. Um, this is uh, BarclaysUS.com is where I'm at. So, but if you just look them up on Google and uh, you see this little their little logo here and all that you're good to go so but like i said this is definitely one that where you, if you really don't know where to put your money um if you're not comfortable putting it somewhere else then definitely put it in your savings account you never want to leave just uh lingering money in your checking account because it's not going to do anything obviously <clears throat> and at least this is extremely low risk because your money is backed by um, by the government, so you're good to go, um, and you'll get something. At least you sitting a check account, you're not getting anything. So moving forward, uh, sorry, uh, let's go here. So 
Now, now what we are looking at are different stocks. And I believe I have actually talked about AGNC in the past. Uh, AGNC um, offers an incredible dividend yield. I have it highlighted. 11.43, that's about accurate. Um, sometimes Google is a little off. Um, even Yahoo Finance is a little off. Um, but we'll just say it's, it's closer to 11%. Now, what I really like about AGNC is the stability of it. AGNC is an extremely stable company. Their stock price rarely, it does not move that much. Since I have um, taken interest into AGNC, uh, their stock price has moved maybe a dollar back and forth, you know. So I think like the highest it was ever at was like 20, something like that. But, um, yeah, so that's what I really like about AGNC is they, they offer an incredible dividend yield of 11% and they pay monthly. And Ford actually invested a uh, million dollars in the AGNC, which would equate to uh, $110,000 a year uh, if, you, if you had that much money. But um, it would be $110,000 a year. Um, but it would actually be more than that because it would be... Um, you know, $110,000, but as they're going through the year, if they're reinvesting in the AGNC, they're just going to keep getting back more and more and more. So, um, yeah, very stable. They pay you once a month, which is fantastic. Um, and yeah, moving forward, uh, next one is New Star. Sorry, this is like a very informative video. I'm not going to be like totally animated or anything like that. So, New Star. Um, now, all these were actually int introduced to me. I didn't just find these. I, they were introduced to me. Um, I did some research and so forth and found them to be uh, worthy of investing in. New Star, another one that is, uh, AGNC is by far the most stable one that I have found that has a very high dividend yield. New Star, this is incorrect down here, it is actually closer to 14% is what their dividend yield is. So, and the stock price, as you can see, does go is a little bit more expensive than AGNC. So AGNC is roughly 19. New Star is closer to 27 at the moment. Um, and theirs is one, like I said, AGNC fluctuates like a dollar, two dollars tops, where I see New Star doing something like that, but like we'll say like three to five dollars, where the actual uh, stock price itself is fluctuating. Um, so that's where that becomes like a little bit more of a risk, but it doesn't fluctuate like this incredible amount. So, but what's nice is like, let's just say that you did invest at say 27 and it does drop to $24 or let's say it drops down to $20 a share. At least you'll have a dividend. Like I said, like I said this is incorrect, a 14% that they'll pay every quarter and which will actually um, make up the difference for what you actually, you know, have lost, you know, if you haven't sold anything yet, so you haven't really lost anything yet. So, um, but that dividend yield will make up the difference. So, and then moving into the third one, uh, BBT, uh, BBT's interest rate is through the freaking roof. <laughs> they, <coughs> And Google has a 16.35, which is still crazy, but it's actually over 17%. So um, this is on the on the spectrum. It is um, higher on the risk spec, higher on the risk spectrum. So I really so it's AGNC first, then New Star, then BBT, and with each one of them, the stock price goes a little bit higher, but the dividends also go um, higher and higher and higher. So BBT has the highest dividend yield that I still consider to be relatively stable, to be stable enough to invest in. So to have 17% of whatever you invest, whatever you have invested in BBT is what you're going to get paid. Uh, you know, they're going to give you that accrued interest 17% throughout the entire year. Same thing with New Star. Most companies pay a dividend uh, every quarter, and it's really just that simple. So whatever you have invested in it, you get that um, percentage back, and then you can decide to reinvest in that company. 
Um, I do like Robinhood uh, because you know I can decide to reinvest back into uh, let's say BBT, uh, or I can grab that money that BBT gave me and put it into something else, or I can just deposit the amount you know directly into my checking account and be done with it. So and then just continue and just keep BBT as getting more and more uh, passive income. So and so moving from stocks which have um, you know inevit inevitably you know um, I have no idea when but there will be some kind of crash again it's just it's going to happen and that's basically essentially what happens when you have a fiat currency when you have money that is printed out of thin air and that's at least <laughs> that leads me into the segue of silver on what we see right now on uh, kind of the middle of the uh, <laughs> the middle of the window here so looking at silver I like silver uh, number one because technically it's a universal currency you can go to any country in the world find anybody who's gonna uh, purchase silver and then use that money um, it's a huge hedge against inflation silver basically lets you uh, any precious metal really lets you know uh, more silver and gold um, lets you know what um, you know how how the dollar is doing so silver is really is below fifteen dollars an ounce right now which is pretty damn low so I would like if you were to start if you started to see a spike in silver like going into at least like the I would say mid high 20s then I would start looking at your stocks and going okay maybe I should start getting out of this and so forth but the last thing is that silver, uh, there was a lot of uh, reports about how it was possible for silver to do um, a 180 on, uh, on gold, um, or at least evening out with gold, because silver is, is, more, is becoming more and more and more and more of a uh, commercial metal. So it's used in all of our electronics, you know, all of our cell phones and so forth. And a lot of, most of it, the majority of it doesn't even get recycled. So these silver reserves get depleted and depleted and depleted and used for all these different things. And then they just get tossed and never found again. They're buried somewhere and, or it's just not enough silver in a specific item to even be worth uh, extracting. So that's where uh, silver has the potential to become um, just as precious, if not more precious, than gold. So, and gold's well over a thousand dollars an ounce. So that's why I really feel like silver is a um, is a worthy investment. And even just buying physical gold, you can buy physical gold on eBay. Uh, there's uh, Kitco, which is what where this chart is from, kitco.com. Um, and then so yeah, or any any coin shop. I personally would never pay over one dollar. Uh, of what the spot price is. So if the silver spot price is 15, I would never pay more than $16 for um, for an ounce of silver. And um, just as if it, if you bought a 10 ounce bar and it would be 160, or it would be 150, I wouldn't pay more than 160 for that. So because there's a there's an exchange there where the spot price and then what you actually sell for is um, they show you those two values are going to be less spot price is always higher and then when you sell it is always going to be lower <clears throat> but if it does go up again which I believe inevitably it will um, you know you could actually uh, cash out pretty you could actually do really well so and this is just something that you could just like I was saying earlier in the video purchase every other week um, you know just buying a couple even just buying one ounce just buying a couple ounces of silver or whatnot and just holding on to it um, if you have physical sil silver, make sure that is safe. <laughs> make sure, make sure you keep that safe, very, very safe. Um, don't let it, <laughs> don't let anyone know that you have it, uh, and put it somewhere extremely safe. So, um, yeah, that's really all I got. I mean, honorable mentions as far as uh, making passive income online and so forth are things like obviously having a YouTube channel. And having ads run on it, so or just having AdSense in general, so having um, 
you know, Google's ads on your web page or your blog, um, on your YouTube channel. Uh, you can put them anywhere. And the same thing goes for another honorable, honorable mention is Amazon Associates, which is where you just, uh, they essentially give you links and banners and so forth of uh, maybe products that you want to review and so forth. And so you can actually link those uh, Amazon, you can put those Amazon links in your descriptions on your website, on your blog, wherever. And if people click on them and they actually purchase something, you actually get a percentage of whatever they purchase because um, you gave uh, you gave Amazon that, uh, whatchamacallit, you gave Amazon uh, that referral. Sorry, my, <laughs> I'm having brain farts and my computer is acting up. So when you're, uh, if they click on that link, it's just like Google AdSense, it's the same thing. So essentially, so you're just, you're, you're there as the referral link. So they're like, okay, cool. Thanks for driving, um, customers to our website or wherever. And, uh, you know, here's a percentage of that for, um, for referring them. So, um, so those are the honorable mentions are just having messing around with Google AdSense and, uh, Amazon associates. So going through very quickly, risk-free investments um, that aren't high yield, but it's better than nothing, uh, or having a, that, the Barclays Savings account at 1.85, or having one of their CD accounts uh, at 3%. Um, and then going into stocks where you're gonna have a really high dividend yields, um, but you know, stock market is what it is. But the ones that I showed you have proved, at least in my experience so far, to be uh, a lot more stable than um, than a lot of other stocks that offer high dividend yields. There are a lot, there are many more stocks that have um, high dividend yields, but are at, like this really high risk. The three that I showed you are relatively low risk, uh, and like I said, AGNC being number one as far as being the most stable of them all. And then last but not least was the silver. Um, Silver is extremely affordable for the everyday person, um, and just accruing that over time, uh, I believe you would definitely see, um, you know, some decent margins um, holding on to silver. So, and yeah, everything else I said. So watch the video again if you forgot, because I, you know, <laughs> this stuff's just somewhere in here. And yeah, that's really all I got. I hope this video helps somebody. Um, I had to record it like, oh my God, like ten times. Uh, just to make sure that everything I was saying was accurate and doing my best to articulate it and so forth. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope this video helped you guys. I hope there's something here that helps you invest in your future and that you can at least start doing this. You can start doing these things um, without a ton of money and slowly but surely at least um, expanding on your portfolio and, and what you have um, you know, and, and saving for the future. So, um, yeah, that's all I got. Thank you again. And I'll see you guys in the next one later.